This is the ROG Phone 6 Pro and if you couldn't tell, it's a gaming phone. So the ROG Phone 6 series were just announced and for those that have seen an ROG phone before, the reaction is probably along the lines of, huh, sure, makes sense. See, these don't really change in shape over the years and they also always launch packed to the brim with the most cutting edge hardware you can find. This thing I'm holding in my hands has 512 gigabytes of UFS 3.1 storage and 18 gigs of RAM. Now I'm not taking a jab at ASUS for keeping the design the same, as this is a very intentional move. Being a gaming smartphone, the ROG phone family usually has a bunch of accessories you can buy to enhance your gaming experience. While not all of these accessories are compatible with each generation, they generally carry over pretty well and a lot of that has to do with the phone keeping the same shape. Secondly, Asus nailed the form factor, which they believe is the most comfortable for landscape gaming, so they're sticking with it. Don't forget, this is primarily a gaming phone. It also has that extreme aggressive gaming look. The ROG Phone 6 Pro that we have here has a secondary display on the back that can show different glowing animations and the small RGB element here that says dare to play. It is delightfully cheesy and I'm pretty sure that some people may find it obnoxious but also that some other people may enjoy basking in its shining glory. It is a fairly heavy phone weighing at almost 240 grams and the matte back does make it a bit slippery so I would recommend a case if you are using it as a daily carry. That heft is justified as we have a fairly large 6.78 inch screen on the front and two front firing stereo speakers. And oh boy, more on the speakers in a moment. The screen is truly beautiful. It's an AMOLED panel made by Samsung and it can reach up to 165Hz refresh rate with a 720Hz touch sampling rate and a delay of only 23 milliseconds. I am supposed to review this, not regurgitate specs, so here's my take on it. The screen is absolutely beautiful. It has a few color calibration options depending on whether you like the super punchy aggressive OLED colors or the more basic and mature realistic colors. The refresh rate is honestly bonkers. I can't see anything beyond 120Hz. But I do think that 165Hz is only there for bragging rights. When you switch to 165, the display changes calibration a little bit, which may or may not look good to you. I think even Asus knows this because when you engage X mode, which is the gaming mode of this phone, it goes to 144 Hz, not uh, 165. That said, at 144, it's extremely smooth and the touch response is mm, chef's kiss. So I cannot continue without talking about the speakers. Those of you seeing an ROG phone for the first time will probably think, you bezels. Well, let me tell you, Sonny. These hold the best speakers I've heard on a smartphone. They are loud, meaty, detailed. And it does help that there's a custom EQ to really dial in the sound the way you like it. Now, what we really like to see on a gaming smartphone are shoulder mounted buttons. Now, these can be set up to help you aim and shoot or crouch and jump in uh, shooter games. And they can also assist in other types of games like strategies and beat em ups and whatever. Instead of mechanical buttons, Asus chose to use ultrasonic pads for a few reasons. It doesn't create durability problems, it frees up space inside the phone for other things and you can adjust the pressure they respond to. The touchpads here can be adjusted to respond to a slight pressure or just a tap. And for the first time ever, you can also program gestures over them. So for example, I can have the left button do one thing when I'm pressing it and another thing when I'm swiping left or right on it. This does enhance my gaming experience. Now I do dabble in mobile gaming, but only if I have a controller or if I have actual physical controls on the phone because this crab thing that gamers do nowadays, it's not for me. Oh, speaking of buttons and RGB, if you thought that the small screen on the back is not sparkly enough for you, may I present the Aero Active Cooler 6. Now this is a fan accessory that is made specifically for the ROG Phone 6 series and it will help keep the phone cool. While looking cool, 
during the extended gaming sessions, which is good for both battery and prolonged performance. It's generally a separate purchase, but you can find it bundled with the ROG Phone 6 and 6 Pro if you pre-order right now. Aside from its main function, the Arrow Active Cooler 6 can literally light up a room with its insane RGB and also, more importantly, it has four hardware buttons on it to enhance your gaming experience even further. I like the feel of the buttons, their engaging mechanism is clicky and just hard enough so you don't accidentally press a button while handling the phone, but just soft enough that you don't feel the resistance when playing. However, I can't say I'm a fan of the overall shape of the fan. It just didn't do much for ergonomics and I struggled to find a nice way to grip it for extended play sessions. Asus has made this boy quite chunky to ensure good cooling, so when you reach this point you might as well just expand it to ensure better grip. Just saying. Performance is, as you might expect, top-notch. Asus patiently waited for Qualcomm to launch the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 and then jumped on the bus. We will have benchmarks posted here for your eyes to feast upon. Just notice how it did not throttle much at the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test, which is quite impressive. No fan attached, by the way. The software is also optimized to squeeze everything it can out of the hardware. You can easily switch the phone from performance mode to battery optimized. Personally, I stuck with the balanced mode in the middle and that was just fine. Speaking of software, it's called ROG UI. It's built on top of Android 12 and it's basically the Asus Zen UI with a couple extra settings for the gaming features. It looks a lot like vanilla Android but has a bunch of useful additions, squeezing the phone to activate something or tapping on the back of the phone to activate something. There's a lot of customization in here. There are still hints of Google's Material U interface where you can choose the system colors to match the wallpaper and unfortunately these huge quick tiles in the drop down menu are again huge Android 12 Y. You can even choose the classic Zen UI theme uh, if you don't like the gamer one and it pretty much looks like stock Android 12 on the surface. Okay, I went far far way too far without even talking about the camera. Now typically on gaming smartphones we don't really expect to the camera to be good, I mean that's not the focus, we look at the shoulder triggers, we look at the performance, eh, who cares about the camera? Well, color me surprised, to be honest, it can't really beat the top players in the category like the Pixels and the Galaxies and the iPhone Pro Maxes. The ROG Phone 6's imagery is a bit oversaturated, a bit over sharpened and dynamics are good but not fantastic. The main camera has a 50 megapixel Sony made sensor, the ultra wide camera has a 13 megapixel one and there's also a 5 megapixel macro camera. Yeah, I know, macro. Let's look at some pictures. The running theme across these photos is that they are a bit too warm, a bit too vibrant and if you zoom in details are a bit too jagged and over sharpened but you know what? I think they still are pretty to look at. What Asus did right here is it nailed the dynamics range. So while some highlights are still a bit washed out, nothing is overblown and shadows are still visible, which basically saves the photos by itself. The portrait mode is not something to write home about, but uh, the vibrant colors can save that as well. The front camera has yet another Sony sensor, this one is 12 megapixels and it's pretty good at nailing selfies. Skin tone, details and dynamics, the full package is right here. I may look just a little bit pinkish, but I am generally impressed with these selfies. When we look at night mode photos, uh, we can see the same themes. Saturation and sharpening are dialed up a bit too much, uh, but those dynamics are just lovely and the selfie camera does struggle a bit, but Hey, you tried your best there, buddy. Press from the future here, taking a quick sample with the selfie camera of the ROG Phone 6 Pro. Now, not bad, a bit noisy, colors are a bit washed out. You are about to see a sample with the main camera outside and man, the colors are boosted. Maybe dial that back a little bit, Asus. All right, roll it. Greetings, you're looking at a video sample with the Asus ROG Phone 6 Pro. So. It's a lovely day outside, look at the colors, look at the details, look at the stabilization as we're moving around a bit. And I'm trying not to trip up. So, we're gonna stop here for just a second to test the out-of-focusing capabilities of this phone. I don't know if you can hear me, but look at me, look at the tree. Look at me, look at the tree. <laughs> Is it focusing right? Okay. Let's keep going, let's test something else. I'm gonna do an epic pose here. Now this one has an ultra wide angle lens and you can switch to it while shooting. So 
We should switch to ultra right now. Check out the dynamics. Is anything getting burned out? Is my face still visible? Is something over sharpened? That is a 13 megapixel sensor. And we can switch to the main camera now. That's the 50 megapixel sensor. And that's basically the video that this phone can shoot. Now, don't get me wrong, this camera package is falling behind the competition which has more modes, zoom functionalities, much better portrait modes. But I think it does enough. When I usually pick up a gaming phone, I don't use it as a daily driver because I go, well, I, if I need the camera for something, it's gonna be bad. This one's not, it's actually good. And before we go, I do have to talk about the battery. So we have a 6000 mAh battery here, which can definitely last us a while. Now, this phone has so many customizable settings, like screen refresh rate and battery optimization, that we honestly just couldn't test every possible combination. We just left everything on auto and balanced and ran tests with that, and here are the results somewhere on the screen. Now, in the realm of flagship smartphones, this is pretty much the average you would expect from any phone. But do keep in mind that with this one you can dial the refresh rate down, you can choose different battery optimization options which ASUS has embedded into the phone. You can even customize your own options to really squeeze the juice out of this thing. So I am fairly confident that I can boost battery performance if I wanted to. And with the 65 watt charger, which comes in the box! You can go from 0% to 100% in just about 45 minutes, which is pretty cool. And there are tons of options in the settings which allow you to limit how fast or how much the battery gets charged. This ensures that you put less stress on the battery and in turn it prolongs its life. You know, in case you intend to love your Asus ROG Phone 6 Pro for 3 years or more. And that was our review of the Asus ROG Phone 6 Pro. I give it not enough RGB out of 10. The non-pro version starts at 999 euros and this super spec version starts at 1299 euros. USD prices are yet to be announced. Keep in mind that uh, currency conversions don't usually work one-to-one -one cross market, but it's in the ballpark. I think it's a fair asking price for this phone. Yes, you do need to be heavily into mobile gaming to want it, but it is a pretty good package. Performance, screen, best-in-class speakers, actual buttons to play with, and a good camera. I mean, not bad at all. Pre-orders also get the fan as a bundle, which is cool. Thanks for checking out our review of the ROG Phone 6 Pro. I've been Press, this is the Phone Arena channel, and I'll see you next time. Peace.